all set. Oh. Uh, hi, uh, I was asking to present myself uh, 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 so that uh, I could give you a bit of background on, on the types of things I'm talking about. Uh, I've been doing testing as uh, my professional uh, career for 17 years. Uh, I started in testing by accident. I decided at some point that testing isn't respected and I became a web developer for about a year and I realized that good people are always respected regardless of the title uh, and uh, as an average developer I usually found uh, one way to go forward and as a pretty good tester and actually brilliant tester in my own opinion of course uh, uh, I find quite many ways of taking steps backward when I was trying to develop. So I decided that maybe a better way to approach this, this uh, 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 issue of, 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 of not being respected or not being valued is actually to get, to get better at, at what you're doing. And I've been on that journey since, and, and on that journey uh, that has taken me to quite many different companies. Uh, the current company from which the case is, uh, I've been there for one and a half years. And before that, I've been working in insurance, I've been working for a, a, a security company, I've been working as a consultant, I've been teaching testing at the university and doing research at the university. So I've been kind of going around different kinds of companies and, and having a chance to, to uh, learn about the, the various ways we do testing in, in companies. So uh, the, the topic uh, that I, I took uh, or chose for today is about my current team. It's about a team that actually isn't in the like, agile ideas. They are, they are not test effective. They're actually uh, much more like a resistant to testing, or especially were that when I joined one and a half years ago. And it's a story of the journey that we've taken together uh, to, to uh, try to change things and, and uh, make a difference in, in, in the small scale. Oh, yes. So, I wanted to take an approach with, with an experience report, like we're really looking at, at the types of things we do, and I, I welcome you to ask questions in the middle, ask for clarifications, uh, if, you don't know, like, if you don't get the idea of what I'm talking about, and challenge me if you feel like uh, the things that I'm talking, that they don't go uh, deep enough, or you don't get the information that, that would be beneficial to you uh, for, for understanding the, the type of, types of things I've done or we've done in our organization that might be useful. But the organization uh, that the case is from is, is Granund. It's, it's a Finnish company of, of civil engineers. We don't do software. That's, that's the company's idea. We don't do software. Software is a small corner in the company. There's about 20 of us in, in that software development corner. And, and most of the day-to-day -day discussions that I have with, with all sorts of colleagues around the company are actually not about software development. They are about buildings and and energy and, 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 and maintenance and, and, and all the difficulties with, with different contractors. So it's, it's kind of a different world in, in that sense. But then again, I work in a software development team. I'm the only tester in that particular team. Uh, so uh, when I joined there, uh, uh, by that time they had not had any testers. So before that they had organized testing uh, uh, so that the team did the testing and the product managers did some of the testing but they actually had a history of decades of developing software without any testers so, so uh, from uh, a point of view of a successful business if you put it as, like, as happy customers and money coming into the, 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 the uh, organization they actually didn't need a tester but apparently something had changed since they decided that they were recruiting one the first one and it just so happened that I was on the lookout for uh, uh, not being a manager, but being actually a tester in a team. Since in a bigger company, it usually turns out so that I go there to be a tester, and in a month I, I, I notice that I, I don't have any more time to do testing. So I had to escape that and to get to do the stuff that I actually love and like, which is, which is testing. Uh, what I learned quite quickly in the company is that uh, one of the reasons uh, that they needed a tester is, is that they had all these, I've taken a picture there, uh, program errors. So uh, at the, the point uh, uh, when they decided to uh, recruit me, uh, they knew that they had about 10% of, of every logged in customers seeing one of these when they were trying to do, do things with the software. The customers never complained, so I would call them a, a forgiving customer base. And uh, they didn't contact, they didn't tell about this. We just saw these in the logs 
and, and that was kind of the first view into, into uh, we need to do something in the organization about quality, we need to, because we want to be better, the developers were, were feeling that they, they needed feedback. But the trouble was that since nobody was complaining, nobody was telling how to get all of these errors out, how, how they happen in production. They needed somebody to help out with that, and that was uh, how, I, how I came in. And also another thing that I noticed that was happening there is, is that uh, uh, they were scaling the business up. They were going international, they had even more customers. And, and having 10% of customers, with the risk of some of them actually at some point complaining, uh, scaling and, and, and uh, problems in quality, they, they don't go together too well. So, so they, they felt they, they needed, needed some help on, on that. Uh, I took some of the percentages on, on the program errors uh, currently, like the previous version that has been out and, and measured, it's like 1% is still the number, but uh, it's been going down quite nicely nicely and, and steadily in the, in, the, in the years that I've, I've spent, or the year and a half that I've, I've spent here. So uh, I went to the company as a new tester to that company, but as an old and a, a professional tester. Uh, so, so I needed to ask around, what kind of a company, what kind of a, a organization, what kind of a development team would I be working with? And I learned that uh, I was supposed to uh, split my time to two teams. Of course, since one, once you have just one specialist in testing. Uh, they were kind of like wanting to, to get some of my time for both of the teams. But this case is about the bigger team with, with more established product. The other one was just getting started at that point and is, is completely in a different uh, phase of, of life with their, their product. So I was, was trying to find out what, what to do with this, this bigger product. product. And I learned that we have 10 developers. Some of them uh, uh, supposedly sit in the co-located space with me. And I was like, yes, I can actually work with the developers and we can pair up and we can do all sorts of things. And when I joined, I learned that uh, our co-location was Mondays and Thursdays. And it meant meetings all day those days because all the uh, rest of the time uh, they were working remotely. They had been doing that since the start of the development. And it was a, like, let's say, like a cheap benefit and, and nobody's really willing to, to give that up. I also learned that some of the developers were not in Helsinki office, they were uh, uh, in, in Wobby office. So we would see probably twice a, a year, and, and Skype was the main, main uh, mechanism of, of how we communicated. And also, uh, usually we needed more hands than, than we had in our own team, so we had a development uh, team, a couple of guys from Russia involved with the development. So about 10 people, uh, uh, 12 at most, depending on, on the, uh, the time frame when we are working, we're developing the software. So one of, of testers and, and about nine of, of developers basically means that the, the first risk that I felt that I need to address is that nobody uh, can assume that I would be the one to do all of the testing. And we started with, with uh, that discussion. I also uh, got to meet the, the product management organization and I learned that, that most of the testing was actually done by them uh, uh, prior to, to me joining and there was one like a head product manager uh, in charge of, of making the, the priority calls but there was a team of, of, of other product managers who would actually help the developers, individual developers uh, prune out the, the features so that they, they would turn to be the ones that, that uh, the business and, and the, the uh, domain specialist knew they should be. So kind of a nice collaboration on, on that. But having me there kind of in the middle is, is that, that when two people are talking, it's, it's really straightforward. But, but when you try to bug in as a third person into those discussions, there were a few challenges, challenges related to that. But uh, the, the size of the software uh, with 10 people and a couple of years uh, already behind in, in, uh, the, uh, in developing it, there was a lot of code uh, that had been tested, but maybe to, not to a professional standard that I would have, uh, I would have liked to, to see in that, that team. So uh, uh, we started uh, talking, we started uh, going through the, the types of things that, that we should do. And uh, I, I think these quotes from Twitter, uh, one discussion about maybe half a year, year ago, I, I can't remember exactly when I, when I took these out. It kind of summarizes the type of things we, we tend to talk with the development team. That uh, quite often the, the programmers, the developers in, in the team, they, uh, uh, they're really positive. They, they know they can do it. And, and most often they're right as well. 
they, they can do it. And, and the, the feedback that I'm giving them and, and the, the uh, bugs that uh, are found, uh, they fix them as, as soon as they, they know about them. But they assume that uh, until it's visible, it doesn't exist. Whereas uh, I come from kind of a, a different angle into the team. Uh, I kind of believe that if I haven't tried it, I'm, I'm probably going to be a bit skeptical about that. And I don't believe before I see. And it's kind of a nice mix, uh, nice match to, to have uh, uh, people that are so different in the team. And, and uh, the spirit has been really, really positive. So uh, uh, from the, the idea that there's one of me and, and ten of the others, uh, we soon started talking that, that uh, the way uh, we need to do things is, well, we use the labels that the kind of uh, recruiting managers were, were uh, giving to us. I came to do system testing. That could be anything. It doesn't actually mean, mean anything specific. The programmers, they would do own testing. That's a, a word I haven't heard anywhere else except in this particular organization. But it actually means exactly the same as system testing, but it means that they usually stop a bit too early and, and they miss out on, on all of the, the, the bugs. And then the product management people, they would do uh, acceptance testing. Acceptance testing and, and the team's architect usually would look at the, the code from the point of view of maintainability and, and future, future development. So uh, what we quite soon uh, realized is that uh, adding one person into the system testing would mean that the responsibility, or we were talking about that, that the responsibility would still stay with the developers. As, as before, they would, uh, in their own testing, try to do as, as much as they could. But uh, they would uh, either come and ask me for help, and I would of course help whenever uh, I was asked. And also, uh, since they were new with the idea of what does a tester do, I would also go and tell them that, that it seems to me that you are the one that should be asking for my help now. And I was volunteering, volunteering to, to uh, uh, do that, that kind of things. So uh, the team, what we were doing there uh, in, the, in the beginning is this, uh, we had monthly releases. The, the product had been out for about one and a half years before I joined. Uh, we were continuously developing it, we were continuously adding new features. Uh, we had no unit testing, we had no test automation whatsoever when I, when I joined, and we were still releasing monthly into production without customers complaining. And again, I'm kind of, kind of referring to the forgiving customers in, in some, uh, some sense. Uh, some of the testing that needed to be done was done by the product managers. But the product managers also are responsible in our organization. They're also responsible for sales. So uh, if they would actually do a lot of testing, they wouldn't do a lot of selling. And that would actually be pretty bad for business. So, so they kind of felt they, they could use a pair of hands to, to help them out. And, and when I talked to them, their perception was that, well, it breaks quite often, but uh, the one, the thing that, like, we know what we try, and it always fails in the same ways. And, and it sounded to me a bit surprising that the, uh, the, uh, the things that would break were uh, so obvious, and still they wouldn't uh, discuss. Well, later, like, later I learned that they were not actually that obvious. They might be obvious uh, once a year, or the same things once a year. But with monthly releases, uh, 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 things get kind of uh, disconnected sometimes, what information comes in when, and people remember things in, in weird ways. But the customer still didn't complain, so it was kind of like a, still an internal thing to start, start uh, uh, doing the, the testing stuff. Uh, with the developers, uh, I, I uh, encountered kind of varied attitudes. Uh, we, uh, one of the, the first things that I was doing is, is pairing up with with developers to, to test with them so that I would learn how, how they actually approach the, the testing. And that's usually where I collected the, the first kind of like attitudes and, and what kind of things uh, they were saying. And I, I remember uh, especially one, one fellow uh, who started, like he was one of the, the fellows coming from Kuopio to Helsinki, just to test with, with me for one day. And he, apparently he wasn't too happy with that. Uh, and, and he came into the, the room that we had reserved for the day, out of, away from the open office, because we, we wanted to uh, let the other people work in, in peace. So he came to the room and he told me, I'm too valuable to test. And that was kind of like how he started. And I'm like, okay, so 
I had just apparently, I, or just a few days before, I had talked uh, with Michael Bolton about uh, attitude problems, and he had been telling me a story about a taxi driver. And I said, I'm going to try this story, like live and, and, and first time. And, and I told the developer that, that uh, have you ever thought about this, that uh, taxi driver that needs a map reader next to him? isn't actually as valuable as the taxi driver that, that knows his way to the hotel without the map reader. So, so that's kind of how I perceive testing. So if you're too valuable to do testing, I actually think maybe, maybe you're, you're thinking things in a, in a bit different way. Like, well, okay, I haven't thought about it that way, but, but still, I'm, I'm too valuable to do testing. I can code. We have uh, product managers here. They can code. They don't know anything about code. So uh, uh, I told him that, that uh, have you thought about the work that the product managers are actually doing? Do you know what, what they're supposed to do? And it turned out that he had actually never asked like, where they use their time. And he had not known that they're actually responsible for sales and actually for the money that goes into his salary. But yeah, okay, well, I hadn't thought about that. And actually for two months, he was showing really nice attitudes towards testing. After that, really short discussion. But still, he thinks uh, uh, continuously that that uh, whatever bugs I find, it might take me half a day to dig out a bug in, in his code, or it might take me days sometimes to dig out some some worse problems. But still, uh, it seems that the product and, and the product's architecture is such that it usually takes him less than an hour to fix the problem, and even if it took him take him an hour, he always feels that he needs to tell me it took 30 seconds. But I know he can't even get his IDE. Uh, the development environment open in 30 seconds. But it just, I, I've uh, grown to understand that that's the, the type of personality that, that it's, it, it's, uh, it's important to him to, to say that kind of things. And I don't take it as, a, as an offense anymore uh, because I've, I've, I've grown to know him, know him a, a bit. Uh, most of the other developers were not as, as difficult with their attitudes. They were saying, well, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm, I'm testing all the time. Like, look how much time I'm, I'm using on testing. But, but I don't find the bugs. I, I don't think they're here. And then when we test together, they're, they're uh, kind of, oh, why would you press that button? Why would you do that? <laughs> why, why, why did you go there? Like, well, I needed to read the text. Like, why do you actually read what the, the UI says? <laughs> so we had all of these like surprises coming in from the developers when we were just pairing up. And they were saying, like, like I can try, but I don't find the problems. So we were trying to, to kind of solve, solve the things uh, uh, together. But still, it remains that the, the, the basic attitude is that, that uh, as a tester, I'm the one who's good at testing, and they are the ones who are somehow like bad at that. And, and that's an attitude that we've spent one and a half years trying to kind of get rid of a bit. And, and, and some of the mechanisms uh, uh, on what we've been doing is, is on the, on the uh, upcoming next slide. Uh, I also talked with some of my colleagues just a couple of days ago uh, about uh, how they take bugs, my, my developers, how, how they take when I tell there's a bug and, and there's a problem and, and it doesn't work. They were like, yeah, you found something, like it's cool, like, we can fix it. Like, 30 seconds, it's, it, they're really positive about getting the feedback. So, so I was wondering, like, like a lot of my colleagues were telling that they actually need to fight for every bug. I don't, so contexts, different organizations are completely different in that sense. And I was asking my developers just yesterday uh, at office, like, why is it that you actually welcome the feedback? What is it like? What's the difference? Where did you learn that? And they said, We've had it in production one and a half years. We know that there's, there's bugs to be found. So, so kind of with realism, knowing that, that you actually will get the feedback and being connected, because we're doing product development, being connected to the reality. That's kind of helping with, with uh, uh, that, that type of an attitude. But uh, still, a uh, uh, big part of, of the at attitude atmosphere and the background to this attitude atmosphere is that, that for the one and a half years uh, I've been in the company, I've been looking at bugs coming in from real customers, coming in from internal customers who at least give us feedback also. And uh, I've learned that from the point when the developers get the, the repro steps to the bug, it takes half an hour, less than an hour, before the fix is in production. And since the software, it's a, it's a web thing, uh, it's a, an ASP uh, uh, service, it's, it's hosted on our own company's uh, uh, servers, they can actually deploy it uh, really fast. 
of course, with the risk that something uh, might be untested at that time. But then again, in a year, I have no evidence of them breaking things with the fixes. I have a lot of evidence of them breaking things with the new features. But the fixes, they seem to have a... a uh, there's, there's something in, in the developer skills that they, they uh, do it quickly, but they still do it with the thought. So, so it hasn't been a problem. And, and that's been actually a surprise to me that in, some, uh, in a lot of ways, in, in my company, I've noticed that uh, our sales has needed to do more work for sales after I joined and we started removing some of the bugs. Because before, if customers ever called, they would get the fix in half an hour. And, and when you would call back to them in half an hour later, like saying, we fixed it. Like, do you want something else? Like, yes, please, if it's this fast. So actually, bugs, this is for a tester like me, it, it was a, a big revelation to understand this. Bugs can actually be a, an upselling uh, thing uh, as long as you're quick on fixing them. So it's always a, a, a bigger picture than, than just the, the, the part that is, is called testing. So, uh, our case, what we did we do, how we approach the, the changes, and, and the big change that, that we've been looking for and are still continuing to look for is, is changing the attitudes uh, by uh, doing things together on a practical level. Instead of just talking about the attitudes, we, we need to do something. We need to uh, learn by doing. Uh, that was the, the idea. So, after I joined, uh, uh, the... Uh, the point uh, of, of me joining was one where they had used an external consultant uh, to define testing processes that they would need. And it was actually funny that uh, in the, the recruitment phase I was reading the consultant's report and uh, it had actually pages of my own text, even though I had not written the report, because well, I've been doing a lot of work on, on that area in, in Finland. And uh, uh, it was suggesting that we should start creating a database of test cases and, and start uh, distributing those to different people and, and start executing them as planned. That was kind of the, the idea on, on the report. And the very first thing that I told when I joined is that, oh, by the way, if, if, if you recruit me, I won't do this, as the report says. Apparently, that was one of the big reasons why I was hired, because they didn't believe in, in the usual style of testing. Uh, and the style of testing that I brought uh, is, is exploratory testing. It's, it's basically uh, continuously learning, using all kinds of, of uh, sources of information, discussing uh, documentation, and writing my own documentation whenever I, I, I feel uh, that that's useful. But thinking about where to use the time, uh, where the time is valuable, and, and what would be kind of like the best uh, uh, investment of, of time. And, and usually the uh, test cases that you can run uh, manually uh, uh, that are scripted, they are not the, the, the best uh, possible approach. So, so I brought my ideas of, of, of this is how testing should be. And uh, I brought, of course, my own skills uh, on, on that. And, and we kind of chose some of the uh, types of things that I would first work on, most important areas for business. That, were supposedly working, so they weren't working when I touched them, they were completely broken, but we just didn't know about those. Uh, then we were, uh, when we were learning that some of the things that we thought that were working, uh, that uh, they needed uh, significant fixes or changes, we would actually do complete area rewrites. Like we were talking about the, the, the quality, like the, the users see, see, the problems that the users see, and the problems that the developers were facing with maintenance. And actually, one by one, we've now uh, rewritten in one and a half years, we've rewritten four out of 12, we call them processes in our software. Uh, basically, just because adding testing uh, to a swamp actually doesn't help. Adding testing and, and trying to fix that swamp doesn't help. You have to actually do the, some uh, like basis uh, layout work. And also, uh, a lot of the, the exploratory testing type of things that I do in our own new features. Uh, when I was showing the developers of the, the types of things that I do and explaining and, and like doing things together, uh, they were also telling me about how they've done testing in the past. And it turned out that they actually had had test cases before, 
and they had been afraid of me joining and, and emphasizing that and, and making them do that. And, and that was one of the big reasons also why they hated testing so much. As one example, I, I put here this, this, this one area uh, where I, I threw away the test cases and I, I got a lot of cheering in the team uh, for, for that. We had 39 pages of text where there was three pieces of relevant info. You could write that in, in two lines of text. Uh, what we did uh, instead is actually uh, go through the features uh, that were in that area that were not mentioned in that test specification at all, that they had had to kind of mark down that they've, they've tested these very basic, very simple things, much more simple than the software actually is. We created a two-page checklist, so you can actually just quickly browse it through. It doesn't tell you what you need to do, but it reminds you of the things that you might need to think of. So, so that kind of support structures came with that. Then we worked on our definition of done. We needed to get out of the, the idea of, of the, uh, it's ready when it's implemented. Uh, so we added uh, some testing related stuff on the, on the definition of, of, of done. And uh, sometime after that, we also realized that uh, the 1 to 10 tester ratio is it's actually not very uh, uh, good, especially when you're doing big refactorings and big new features uh, with, the, with the team. So we added uh, an external tester who is not working in the organization, but is working with this particular team uh, from Romania. Uh, and uh, is definitely an exploratory tester and has uh, proven over the last year when she's been in the, in the uh, project, has proven that, that foreigners can fluently read Finnish specifications and, and test based on that. It's, it's just about attitudes. So the exploration, uh, exploratory testing type of things uh, tend to bring the, the active learning attitudes that, that you'd like to see or I'd like to see in a, in a tester. Uh, we, we tried the pairing just like when I, when I joined, but uh, after that uh, I suggested we would do more pairing. The developers said no, they don't like to, to pair up, they, they prefer me doing it alone, it's, like, uh, it's anyway me doing that and, and, uh, and, and they could be doing the next feature. So, so we started doing stealth pairing, meaning basically that uh, whenever I, I, I needed information I would uh, actively ask the developers, like, hey can you come and show me, show me how you've implemented this show me what, how this should work. So, so the, the things that I would like them to test themselves, I would test them so that they would watch with the excuse of, of I need your help. Uh, and, and that was kind of a, it was helping a, a, a lot with, with uh, the, the collab collaboration. Because again, uh, not being co-located, uh, uh, not actively doing things together was, was the status of uh, then uh, uh, I realized that a big part of, of why the, the developers were so reluctant uh, uh, came from the business side, came, came from product managers. It came from the fact that there was always so many features that they could do. There was always the next one in the queue. And, and uh, just having the definition of done, uh, uh, because you, did, they, they, you couldn't explain the, what is good testing to, to people who hadn't done that type of things. Uh, uh, we needed uh, uh, kind of a very uh, unagile type of a, a thing. We needed time uh, to actually do testing, to do fixing, and, and, and to try out uh, testing related things. So, so I went to the product managers and, and I t explained to them like why they were suffering from delays in the monthly schedules and, and why they were suffering of, 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 of bugs in production. And I said that, that uh, the problem is, is pretty much on, on not having time to fix things when the feedback comes too late. Like uh, we're already in the production when, when it's been tested, so we need to do something about the overall schedule. And we introduced this test fix finalize week and uh, uh, by talking to the product manager, it wasn't easy. It was actually a really big campaign that I needed to do. I got uh, one out of four weeks for every team member to be doing testing, fixing and finalizing. Uh, some of the developers said they, they uh, got kind of scared. Oh no, they need to do a full week of testing. But what we actually ended up doing is this full week of fixing. So we, we used that time on, on uh, whatever we felt as a team, uh, what we felt was, was a smart thing to invest the time on. 
So there was some testing that we would do, uh, and there was some uh, uh, fixing that we would do, but there were also themes that we would try to drive together and forward with that time. So when you have one week of, of focus as a developer, what we learned is, is that, that you can actually try doing unit tests even though you have no skills yet. You have never done that before. So we were doing unit tests for six months. Uh, every month we were doing unit testing and refactoring so that we could add unit tests. Up to the point when, when we again started feeling that, that we're not making progress, the, the unit tests don't feel so useful, useful right now. Right now, and, and we thought uh, we might get more boost into, into unit testing by bringing in a, a trainer from an external organization to show people how to do unit testing. And what we actually learned from that is, is that the, the refactorings that we would need to do to do uh, really good unit testing above the couple of percent level that we've ended up with right now, it's the current status, uh, uh, we would need to do uh, so much of changes into the, the architecture uh, and, and the code structures that uh, the one week uh, every month wouldn't be anywhere near enough. So we would go back to the business and asking can we uh, uh, change technology area by area to something a bit more modern than, than the one that we were, were using at that point. But also the, uh, there would need to be changes in the ideas of, of some of the developers. For example, uh, I have one developer in my team uh, who thinks that the, the best maintenance is, or best maintainability is that he can see the, the uh, uh, database structure right through the code all the way to the business layer and the UI. So if the database structure is completely visible, not encapsulated in any way, that's maintainable to him because he thinks in, in, in the, the SQL code, basically. Uh, well, I understand that's his idea, but the other team members might not, might not have exactly the, the same idea. And with that idea, adding unit tests is, is extremely difficult. So we, we were not making progress on that, so from the uh, training we, we uh, learned to uh, set up a, a project on, on uh, a technology change. It's still in the queue on when do we get to do that. Uh, but we decided that uh, a better way to, to use the uh, one week every month uh, is, is to do Selenium tests on the UI level. And, and just adding a couple of tests uh, we've already been we've been finding repeatedly problems with those tests. We don't have many of them, but it's surprising how quickly actually the, the percentages ramp up when you add a couple of of, of, uh, of, of GUI level level tests. But Sorry. with yeah, percentages of what? Based on the the code coverage. Okay. That's code coverage just from well the, the Microsoft tools is is, is driving it's data from there. So when we run the tests, like how what percentage of the was, was, was gone through. Uh, then again, it might be that uh, that the uh, uh, tests are not actually checking uh, enough things. They're very simple, they're very like, first things, but already the, the change in the atmosphere towards uh, how the developers feel about the testing that they need to perform, uh, it's now a technical challenge. It's now coding, it's, it's now something that, that they find exciting. And they didn't find unit testing exciting in the same way as, as now they're finding the, the, the Selenium uh, things exciting. But again, in six months' time, uh, they might again wear out and there needs to be another strategy, strategy there. Uh, but with the enthusiasm, they, they finally, over, after one and a half years of, 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 of trying and, and discussing and, and, and could we have some automated tests for our daily bills and our continuous integration, Two weeks ago, we finally integrated the tests into check-ins and, and, and uh, have been actually finding relevant bugs regularly since. Uh, and before, there was two out of ten developers who kept finding the relevant bugs because they were running the tests outside the, the continuous integration system. So, uh, 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 what we've done, what we've needed to do, is, is basically uh, take a step at a time, try to find something practical that we can do. The team isn't still test infected. I think they will never be test infected. They will always be resistant. But uh, it's a, a long-lasting uh, project to work with them in stealth way, because they don't want the open testing still, uh, uh, to get, uh, get them to learn uh, 
testing bit by bit and just having them uh, do sessions together, uh, I can already see that, that they, they, uh, they're starting to, to actually find the same kind of problems that I could find if only they take, take time for that. Our current challenges are related again to the, the business side uh, of assuming we can do much more than we can. So no matter how well we show like, like the estimates are way above, it will always turns out that, that our, our monthly cycles look like this. And it's really hard to actually estimate how, uh, how testing might actually uh, take place when you don't know even what we will develop until the last week. When it's been developed, then we know. So uh, I'm thinking about changes to that. And another thing is, is that in the last six months, the trend has been to new features. And the developers feel just as strongly as, as I do that uh, it gets uh, really difficult with the amount of bugs uh, 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 getting onto the, the backlog and, and we're trying to, to kind of uh, uh, do some uh, actions on, on that. On the summary, like, why did I use the word serendipity and, and perseverance? What were the, the weird words there? Uh, with this team, working with this team, it's, it has taught me that, that uh, a lot of the things that I bring as a tester to that team are about uh, lucky accidents and keeping doing things over and over again and, 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 and doing things longer than other thing, other people assume that, that we be doing things. Serendipity is it's basically it's, it's a word meaning that, that uh, uh, when uh, we uh, vary the behavior, when we do things uh, more, when we do things in, in more varied ways, uh, sometimes we just find information that we couldn't find with it, that, uh, in a planned way. So we just run into those. Uh, sometimes I feel it's just my luck, but uh, uh, I feel that it's, it's not just luck. Maybe it's luck uh, that I, yesterday when I arrived at the, uh, the hotel, uh, I actually got a uh, room number and a key, and they were not in the same, uh, they were not matching. That's usually my luck. Maybe it's my luck that the first day when I joined the company and the first testing that I did, uh, I couldn't get the software to do anything except give me a program error because they had shown me where to log in, like giving me the link to the software, and I have put that in, in, in bookmarks, and I went to the bookmarks when I, when I had my first chance of, of testing about an hour later, and, and if I bookmarked that software, it just wouldn't work for that one page that I had luckily stepped on. Or that uh, when we were doing changes uh, on, on the product name, uh, there were 168 places in the code that the developers told that they needed to change the, to change the product's name uh, that I would run into the one place where, because of technology that was different, it would fail. These are actually not just accidents. They, they are uh, intentional changes or intentional ways of analyzing what I would do, uh, trying to understand the like, differences in technology, trying to understand that that if I push my luck, if I do things differently, if I don't use the data that the developers give me, it's, it's, it's more likely that I get lucky than that they would uh, with the, the bugs. So the more I practice, this, you know, the luckier I get, is, is the feeling. And perseverance is, is the other thing that I've learned in particular with this team. Like keep doing, keep trying. A lot of people in my team seem to uh, think that if it's a, a, a week of development, it can be more than a day of testing. Uh, and if it's an hour of development, it can be more than half an hour of testing. And it, things don't necessarily work that way. About a week ago, uh, we finalized uh, one uh, change that took us two weeks to develop. It took us three weeks to test that. And we had to find 150 issues on, on that area. And it happens to be the area where we have the, the developer who tests the most. So even he runs into these, these like uh, assumptions of, of, of uh, things are better better than they, they actually actually are. So it's it's it's, it's not that uh, 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 you would need to know all of the things, but uh, keep learning, keep trying, uh, continue, and that actually brings you already a lot of the, the results. So comparing to all of the other projects that I've been on, I feel that in this particular one, testing is easiest. Uh, at, at, at what I've done, done uh, overall, because the software system it's, it's simpler than, than a lot of the, the other systems I've, I've worked with. 
and uh, looking at the developers, looking at our team collaboration. Uh, these are the things that we're trying to learn together. Push your luck and keep trying. And that actually takes already the developers a lot further with their own testing than, than what they are. They have been doing by, by this time. So how does this sound? Any questions, comments? Does it sound like familiar? Anyone working with a team like this? Why, okay. ca why customers were not complaining? Is it because of mentality that they are more patient? Uh, I've been speculating about this, but customers don't care, well, complain a lot. I think the re main reason must be that customer is the one with the money, and user is, is uh, the one without the money and that has to use it. And, and uh, the organizations that use this type of software uh, tend to be very hierarchical. So uh, there's a, a huge disconnect between the users and the customers. And the users might not have the, the, the route to us. Mm -hmm. And one of the next things actually that I'm, I'm working on, I'm still pushing the product management on that, is, is a metric on, on uh, end user satisfaction. Would you recommend our software to another user? Because that's kind of the feedback our, that our development team is mostly craving after. Like, like uh, how do they feel? They don't tell about the problems, but they might if we would first get our like feet uh, mm -hmm. into the door, just getting the, the answer. Like, how many of them actually, uh, the users, are, are unhappy? If we don't ask, if we don't find out, it's just speculation. I had, I had a question about uh, your, I think it was your second slide where you mapped the situation. Uh, you don't need to go all the way no, back. No. One thing that surprised me was, uh, right, so that, that orange box with 150 uh, K lines of code, yeah. of which, and, not of and which, not of, what, yeah. I mean, and 130K yeah. of comments, that's, that's very unusual. Yeah, it's, it's Can you quite unusual. you comment on that? I mean, is that related to the culture? Uh, is that something I would not expect anyway? <laughs> I actually, I'm not sure why that is. I haven't looked at the comments so much myself, so, so I, I, I really can't comment on those. Uh, I keep hearing that the developers complain that it's not well enough documented. But this, is the, the, this is the only documentation that they write. So, so I think it's, it's because they're kind of like a, a tight group, so they care about each other. So I think it, it reflects on those numbers. Do you use these comments to understand software? Or you I just, don't use uh, them, no. no. I use the developers to understand the mm -hmm. software. So <laughs> conversations are much more powerful than we. That's, That's my experience. And, and the other thing that struck me was uh, when you said that most uh, of the bugs came from new features rather than from fixes. And that's also kind of unusual. Um, um, I've often, often seen uh, programming organizations where uh, after, after the architecture degrades past a certain point, whenever you fix one bug, you create two yeah. more. So that's, that's the same experience that I have, and that's why I was emphasizing it so much. Because it surprised me that, that they are actually able to fix things without causing side effects. And I, I think it's, it's partly related to the fact that they collaborate when they do the fixes, and they don't collaborate when they do the new features. <laughs> the developers, I mean. Like, like they, they, they do group work when they're pressed with external feedback. They work together, whereas otherwise they would do solo work. That's, that's my assumption, of course, but that's how I, I interpret it. Okay, but thanks. Oh, oh, you have still one more question. How we created those? Yeah. You're using the or no, there's no method that we've been using. What we actually did is, is that uh, we uh, brought in a consultant friend of mine that I know that is very fluent with Selenium for two days, and she did the first seven Selenium tests. Then our uh, developers did refactor those, and then they've added more, more stuff. So they needed the example with two days effort. They got the example, and then they, they could change it into better, 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 better architecture. So, so that's kind of just doing and, and, and uh, incrementally adding, adding stuff there.